Welcome to the Sea Intellect Proprietary Research Report Review. I'm Will McCauley here with our founder, Mike Reed. Uh, Mike, there's been some talk recently of, of Saudi Arabia's current budget situation and the potential impacts on the international crude markets. Can you walk us through your thoughts on that and, and, and what you think is going on here? Yeah, and it's kind of a preamble. A lot has changed in the last 18 months in the world's crude markets. Canada actually leapfrogged Iraq as the fourth largest producer. The U.S. actually leapfrogged Saudi Arabia as the second largest producer. So today, here's the sequence. Russia's number one, U.S. is number two, Saudi Arabia is coming in the third spot, then Canada, and then Iraq, and then Iran. So granted, the Iran sanctions are hugely important. I want to kind of turn the focus today back to Saudi Arabia and its budget deficit. Saudi Arabia has long run budget deficits 86% of their income is from crude exports. Only 13% is not related to crude exports. So we're going to focus on crude exports as it relates to their budget. Now, if you think about Saudi Arabia through the years, when it's running a budget deficit, it really has four levers it can pull. And we're going to walk through each four of these in some brief charts. But the first lever it can pull is to sell off or draw down its foreign assets. They've done this before. They're currently doing this. The second lever that they can pull is they can change their crude exports isolated without other nations following. The third lever they can pull is they can work OPEC to collectively change exports. And then the last lever they can pull is they can change or reduce their budget. So, so Will, what I want to do is just walk through these four briefly and then close out with what may be going on in the crude markets, contango versus backwardation. So let me get started. On the first slide you see here is the first lever net foreign assets, each dollar change in crude changes the foreign net assets of Saudi Arabia on average about two and a half billion dollars. You can see that the foreign assets rise with crude price and it falls with crude price and you can see that they've been in a drawdown mode really since the fall of 2014. We've had a brief pause over the last three months but this is still in a drawdown mode relative to crude price. So that's, that's the first lever. Let me, uh, let me move on to the, the second. The second is what's going on with their revenue and their budget. You can see that their budget uh, today, underneath the new leadership in Saudi Arabia, is about $228 billion a year. You can see that that's down from highs of previous years. Let's shift and look at revenues. This revenues against function of crude exports and crude price. You can see that the deficit really peaked out at about $170 billion. <clears throat> today, it's about $30 billion but it's still a material deficit. We did a, a piece of proprietary work uh, within Cienelect and it kind of had some interesting results and we kind of want to share them with you today. We said, what if Saudi Arabia in isolation alone decided to raise or lower their exports by 100,000 barrels a day? Again, the rest of the world was a static or a stable market, just Saudi Arabia. And what you find is there is no budgetary change whether Saudi Arabia in isolation raises or lower crude exports. Why? Because as they raise exports, the price offset exactly matches from a revenue standpoint and vice versa. If they increase exports, the price falls. So on average, since 2016, I think this is a really interesting number, every 100,000 barrels in isolation changes the world's crude price by $1.12 a barrel. You raise exports 100,000 barrel, crude falls $1.12, and vice versa. And so what we've done in this chart is today's scenario is in the blue. The blue is about $70 crude, 6.7 million barrels a day of exports, that's Saudi's current run rate, gives them a revenue target of about $200 billion against a budget of 228, so they run at a deficit of about $29 billion. And the other scenario shows you what happens if they raise or lower exports, the corresponding change in crude price. But I think what's interesting is net-net, there's no change in the budget deficit. It stays between 29 and 31 billion dollars. So Saudi Arabia today, in isolation, standalone, whether they increase or decrease their exports, it makes no difference. Their only lever comes if they can convince OPEC to follow the same path. Will, what I want to do is I want to turn it back to you. We've heard a lot of market speculation that Saudi Arabia may be trying to push the curve into backwardation. So they've been buying the front, lifting it in order to sell their spot reserves, their spot exports, pushing down the back in order to discourage U.S. shale drillers. So, Will, I know you've done some analysis in this area. Let's take a look at, at what you found. 
Sure. Thank you, Mike. And yes, I think generally we'll go through some different market information, market indicators that you know, ultimately aren't showing evidence of the type of market impacts that people are speculating we're seeing. So uh, on the first chart here, what we're looking at is the 12-month WTI versus the one month. This is the level of backwardation or contango in the market. And you can see for the past six months or so, we've had two bottomings once in early February around $5.75 market went into contango, less backwardation during that period, and then another bottom uh, around middle of April. But since then, when the, the speculation has been rife that they've been potentially impacting the market, you have not seen any significant increase or, or really decrease that matter in the level of backwardation in the market. So the evidence you know, just isn't there. Okay. Um, another, another thing to look at is, is volumes, and we're gonna look at three different metrics of, of volumes. The first we're gonna look at just all tenor volumes that are currently transacted in both WTI and Brent over a long, you know, again, that same four to five month period. Again, there's no discernible pattern of increase in volumes. There is one exception in the early um, April time period where volumes did increase. But if I go back to the previous chart, you can see that did not in result in any increase in backwardation. In fact, you, you went into um, closer to a contango market than a backwardation market. Um, the other two uh, volumetric charts we look at, again, is this the volume on the one month uh, contract. Again, no discernible increase or spikes in volume um, relative to anything that you, you would expect normally in the market. And similarly, looking at the 12 month volumes, again, you have the normal seasonal rolls that you would expect yeah. mid-year and annual, but beyond that, no discernible evidence of anything funny going on in the market. So really the evidence just isn't there. In addition to your comments about them really being indifferent um, to the levers, I don't, I don't see this, see this happening. Uh, well, that's great. What I'd like to do is uh, this information is in our full report and there's a lot more information including fast highlights for crude natural gas and power, but you can find it all on our website, cnelect.com. Please visit it for more information. Thank you. Mm -hmm.